for the banana in the tailpipe. <laughs> Hell. <laughs> don't don't let Uncle Larry trick you. She like, uh uh-uh, stop now. Now I know it's not real. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> she reaching back. <laughs> What's happening, YouTube? We are live already. We just getting the show cranking. I got my daughter in here playing around on the internet with Larry, Auntie Muchella. She's in here smiling and cheesing, hey. having a good time. Yeah, I'll see. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, yeah. They they know we talking about you, L. Now go 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 give it to mommy, okay? Go give it to mommy. There ain't no fun in here. There's no fun to be had in here. Go give it to mommy, okay? She's like, there's all kinds of fun in here. No fun to be had in this room, L. Go give it to mommy. Tell mommy you ready. Bye bye, sweetie. Bye bye. What's happening, YouTube? We in the building. It's the usual crew. L mommy. Hey, she's like, uh, what? L, you acting like Groot from Guardians 2. God, I man. am Groot. <laughs> y'all, do y'all remember Guardians of the Galaxy number two? What it was in, in the <laughs> end, in the uh, end, Rocket Raccoon kept telling Groot to do stuff with that bomb, and Groot kept messing up. <laughs> I, am, I am Groot, no, <laughs> yeah, oh. that's what L doing. Ain't that right, baby? <laughs> I, I, I see your mommy. Go, go, to, go to mommy. She's behind us. <laughs> There's your mother. You see the flowers I gave our princess, Princess Shuri L. Time to forever. Peace. Well, ladies and gentlemen, enough of that fun <laughs> stuff. We are back on our Wednesday night schedule. And we've got a packed show for y'all. This is our everything show. So we're going to be covering a great show that Larry Muchella have basically beat me across the head to review called Heels. It's a real good show. And if you grew up like we did watching wrestling back in the day, I think you'll find some entertainment in it. But we also have a couple of people in my subscribership who are former wrestlers. And Uh guess what? Next week, one of them is going to join us to talk about what's real, what's fake in heels. And then we also Mm. got this new craze. We got a lot of people that don't want to get the vaccination, right? And then we got a lot of damn people climbing up milk crates. Jesus Christ. Look, when I was young, the only thing we did with milk crates was make them into basketball hoops on the light pole. That's what we did. (laughs) We couldn't afford them. So we put put records in them, the DJs used to use them. That's what I was saying. We used to take them and use them for storage. (laughs) <laughs> hey, we, we did that too, but we had to play basketball where I come from. So we got that story for you. Then, ladies and gentlemen, do y'all remember the movie The Wood? It's getting ready yep. to be a TV show coming real soon. Yeah. Wow. On okay. Showtime. Showtime. Yeah, I, I got all the gory <laughs> details for you. And then last but not least, a show that maybe Moochella and Nita the Diva might get together and review. It's called Sweet L.A. Something like that. Something to that effect. Huh. I got the trailer for it, and we're going to break it down and take a look at it. But it's let's a give a shot. Yeah. It, no, not really. It's more like a um, love and hip hop type thing, but it, they changed the name. So okay. you might even be into it, Larry. They're covering your area. They're covering um, the West Coast, so it might be a thing for you. All Let right. me shout out the people. Suburbia Jones. Tressa C. Been in here a hot minute. Yeah, L. <laughs> do got them dimples. She sure do support gaming. D. Weave. My Dude, folk was from the 703. Um, Suburbia Jones loves heels. Oh, man. Oh, man. Sweet November. Look, y'all look at this. Oh, wow. <laughs> Sweet November has come through. It's L. Put this on her stocks. Oh, you better believe it. As a matter of fact, <laughs> I haven't been keeping, I haven't been totally honest with y'all. As much as I invest in stocks the last three months, I've been messing with the crypto. And if you Mm -hmm. want to know what I'm doing with my crypto, I'll be dropping the video Saturday on my other channel, the Life Games Financial Channel. Be sure to go check it out. I'm putting videos up there almost every day to help you guys make those gains in your finances. And um, sweet November, of course, I got to give you a video to say thank you. Um, Since I don't have anything for this tonight, 
I'm gonna give it to you tonight. Hi, little girl. You're so cute. Is your mommy home? Bitch, I am my own mommy to fuck. Bitch, you just hired me. The fuck, the fuck you got going on? It's your ugly ass milk trying to poison me and shit. I don't know where the fuck you got that milk from. Definitely ain't I no fucking cow. <laughs> <laughs> now, so wouldn't awesome. wouldn't y'all love to see people try to climb the milk crate he was holding? <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness gracious wouldn't be no climbing that bitch at all and then as we stroll down we've got kobe james davian wallace nancy <laughs> new i love nancy nancy's my home girl i follow her on the gram 703 and then buzz <clears throat> larry didn't What's kill himself up, on the scooter <laughs> <laughs> you saw that huh <laughs> so if you want to know what he's talking about larry just dropped a video well, he's talking about those rental scooters that you guys might see in big towns. So you don't <laughs> got to be walking and sweating and stuff like that. Go check that video out. It's a good video. That wasn't even a rental. Somebody sent that to me. You can you, you own it. Keep that one. You own oh, it. Wow. Yeah, own it. Damn. And it's plug-in electric. Uh-huh. Plug it in and roll know. around. See, I wish I was a YouTuber. Damn, I wish I was a YouTuber. <laughs> get, see, I'm hanging out with special Negroes. We got Negroes that get to see movies. Two weeks before they come out, we got people that's getting electric vehicles. And damn, when I'm going to get mine? That's all I got. You did get yours. Remember, you got like half off a of Tesla. Yeah. Right. <laughs> you forgot about that, right? Yeah. You, know, I mean, you got, you got a beard on that one. It's like, <laughs> what have you done for me lately? Exactly. You got to yeah. update your resume. That was two years ago. <laughs> So without oh, further oh, ado, people, and let me shout out my boy Buzz 703 coming through <laughs> with the 703 Super Chat. And Buzz, for you, you old school like me. And every now and then, we need a little old school in our lives. So let me give you this one. And um, speaking of which, football season is coming back. Yeah, it is. I might be hanging out with Jay Moore a little bit, doing some things up there. But nice. um, 703. Also check my channel. I have a video out for five ways you can watch the NFL free. So check them out. Try to catch your games and you don't have cable. Go ahead and check that out. This is for you, Buzz. They don't make the NBA <laughs> intros like they used to, Buzz, but, you know, nah. that's, that's why we got to keep them on deck right here on this channel. So let's let's go ahead and dive into the first subject, my people. First thing we're going to cover today is this damn milk crate challenge. Ladies and gentlemen, people have broken fingers, bones, and one person was near death trying to get their come up it's on social media. Take a look at this report. Latest craze to take over social media. This is the milk crate challenge. People stack a bunch of milk crates in a staircase oh, formation, try to walk across them. They rarely Damn. make it. It may simply be a break from all that's going on in the world right now, but still, it goes without saying, it can be dangerous. And tonight, Fox 9's Karen Scullin shows us how a local restaurant is getting in on that challenge. With milk crates stacked up at the Lotus restaurant in Minneapolis, co-owner Yum Win thought he'd offer them up to anyone wanting to step up for the milk crate challenge. I watched what? some videos on, you, on YouTube and Facebook, and I saw some funny stuff on there. So I took out the garbage, and I found a bunch of milk crates. So. And you thought, why not? Why not? <laughs> Buy one for the price of two and get one free. <laughs> it's a viral trend that started on TikTok. Uh oh go! Go! go and has crossed over to other social media. Oh! There's really not much to it. Stack the crates as high as you dare and give it a shot. But you should My know got on the Tim. success rate seems to be relatively low. Damn! Oh! 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 oh. oh my we stacked God. a few crates in Loring Park, but it was only the squirrels who took up the challenge. The little guy pops up on one. A pause. <laughs> Then boom on the second. You can do it, squirrel. And a quick hop to the top, and it's Rocky the squirrel for the steal. I mean, really? Oh, no way! So they know exactly what they're doing. They got the prize and a uh, couple tries, but yeah, you know, I was not surprised at all. 
Yep. Good feet, yeah, good squirrels. Back to the people climbing I the crates. Really? The challenge oh, is oh, actually God. dangerous. Reports of broken bones rolling in, and HCMC trauma prevention posting this warning not to take the challenge. I hope my children don't do it. I hope my nephews and nieces don't do it. With that, we kept ours to a short stack, and that was enough for me. Okay, I guess it's my turn, but I'm only going to try three. Here we go. One, no big deal. Two, a little bit bigger of a deal. Uh, okay. And we're going for three here. Okay, scary than a little bit. No that ain't no high. That ain't no high. Props to the people who do like door. seven or whatever. Ah, uh, okay. All right. I did it. But can I stand on three crates while eating fried rice from the Lotus? Yup, sure can. In Minneapolis, Karen Scullin, Fox 9. Again, uh, we want to remind our viewers. Boy. It's, it, that was a Karen short stack. Karen is a professional. That was a short stack. You could but tell by the bare feet. As we showed you there with many, many videos, very dangerous. Yeah. You likely will fall. This makes you nervous, doesn't Be it? Be careful. Yes. Doesn't it? <laughs> Man, if you want to see these milk crate challenges, follow Snoop on Instagram. It's like I think I think he has every single one that's ever been made on the internet on his channel, and there are some there are some ridiculous ones out there. I saw the girl doing it in the high hills, and she aced it. Now Did let me really, let, yeah, yeah, this chick, this chick right here. <clears throat> now, however, ladies and gentlemen, even though she got on high heels, these ain't stilettos. Her heels right. were thick. If she was doing this in stiletto, she would have had to been on her tippy toe because ain't, oh, no yeah. ain't no stiletto going to be able to um, stand on the heel the way she's doing. These was, but you know what? The sister did it. And then they was trying to distract her when she got to the top, making noise. You know, and, and, you know mm. we need concentration when we reversing and parking and shit. Definitely when you're <laughs> on top of a milk crate, you need some concentration. But Moochie, I'm going to come to you first. Like Tressa C is saying. A one percent chance of completing it, but the vaccine is too risky. I don't understand people. They, it, nine times out of ten, whoever's on there is going to the emergency room. Yeah, yeah. Don't you don't want to get the fire. Look, I, look, I'm, I'm not. I don't even want to mention that. But this is stupid to me. And some people's doing it. The hood people is doing it for like a hundred dollars. That's mm. it. Yeah, like, I, you know, that's crackhead prices. The price is crackhead. They probably, well, the one I saw, the guy was out there, and it was raining. I was like, it was raining. So, you know, the ground is wet, and he doing all of that. I was like, man, they offered them so much. Oh. <laughs> now, look at this. I caught this one. Mid-butt in the air doing the butterfly. Oh. Uh, no, he going to be sore tomorrow. You, you yeah, damn yeah. right. So, Larry. Oh, um, my back. Oh, Larry. my neck and my back. Larry. Oh my neck, back, and my ankle. <laughs> that ain't oh how it go. God. It's my neck, my back, my pee, and my crack. And that's what's going to be hurting on him. <laughs> so, Larry, talk to me, my brother. We are willing to get this, but we can't do something <clears throat> that not only saves you, but saves America and helps you out. Like, I'm, like, I'm, with, I'm, I'm at this point with it, Larry. Okay, let's say you don't want to get vaccinated. But you're somebody that everywhere in your life you go, you wear a mask. I can tolerate that. But hell, we get no milk crates. Yeah, this is this is a this is an example I think of when the world and life just becomes so overwhelming that you just can't deal with it anymore. So you just find the dumbest, lamest distraction that you possibly can. Mm. Because mm -hmm. I mean, this is this is absolutely absurd. Like, where are they getting all these damn milk crates? Right. You know. Right. Because if you look on all those milk crates, most of them all say property is so and so, and there's a fine if you take them and all that. And I know they didn't buy all those doggone crates. I just think it's a distraction. People need to go get their doggone vaccines and get back to work. Well, here's <laughs> here's the thing, Larry. How do these internet challenges get started and then get boosted? Because we've seen some crazy, we've seen back when YouTube was a pioneer, you had those white dudes putting turtles in the microwave, blowing off their head, and yeah. nobody ain't getting mad about that. Uh, where where the hell was PETA for them? I don't recall PETA catching the attitude. I didn't even know about this. What yeah, you? man. Oh yeah, yeah they, they've done some pretty, they've done they, some pretty bad things. They've had a lot of these challenges. I think the ones that are the most the fire successful. challenge was crazy. <clears throat> 
The witch challenge? The fire where they was pouring alcohol and then lighting themselves up. Yeah, yeah. There's that. I think the ones that I was gonna say, the ones that are the most dangerous, seem to be the ones that get the most attention because they have ones where, like, they had the cinnamon challenge where people were eating cinnamon, and they said that that could be very dangerous. And there were a lot of people, a lot of kids, ended up in the ER because of that. They had those challenges where people were challenging each other to drink like a whole gallon of milk, and like I think they did that on the breakfast show one time, and and a, and the dude died like the next day. What? And, do y- do yeah. y'all remember? Do y'all remember the the uh, Carolina Ghost Reaper Pepper Challenge? The hottest pepper on the planet, yeah. and the only way you can simmer that burn is if you drink something that is dairy based, like milk, maybe yeah. some yogurt, something like that. Um, but I hate to go racial on y'all, but I am. <laughs> How come it is that when white people start this bullshit, it's all good? If black mm. people would have started doing that stuff, we would have been ridiculed, maimed, memed, <laughs> and talked down to, and would have been told to give up our license to use social media. I give that to you, Larry. I mean, we know we know how it is, man. It's like for them, it's all fun and games and everything. For us, it's dangerous and 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 a bad representation, and you know, part. But I think part of that is because with with black folks, as we know, whenever we step out into the street, we don't represent ourselves. We represent all of us, and so when somebody's ass up like that, you know, falling on some milk crates, he makes all black people look stupid, and. When white people do it, it's just some dumb white kids having fun. Look at this and dude. So, he's like he dead. He does. He looks <laughs> like he no, just... he looks like his back is broken. The I mean, and I don't even really want to give this sister a lot of props, but I am. She rocked this. If y'all haven't seen her video, sir, yeah. she rocked the hell out of this video. Was, she looks and, fit. She looks like she right? probably has some serious balance. So one of the things that I noticed she did that a lot of people don't do. She kept her center of balance. She kept her knees bent, and she kept her balance very perfect and low, almost like the squirrel did. Um, yeah, she does look like she has a nice low center of gravity. She kept that center of gravity, man, and she knocked it out the park. But ladies and gentlemen, this thing is very dangerous. Mm-hmm. Make sure your kids ain't doing it. Don't let them do it. Because at the end of the day, when you go to the hospital and you go to the ER, you got to pay that bill. That's yeah. just on you. That is There's definitely not gonna be anybody out there filming in the hospital or filming at the house when they have their leg up in a Look, cast. I, the next if I had a kid now, I'd be like, You try this, I'm not even taking you to the hospital. Oh, damn, you're gonna go rock all on the family, yeah. huh? You, <laughs> so, my take man, yourself to the hospital. My man Ron said, I used to work at a school and we constantly had milk crates by the delivery area. They're out oh, no, there. There's trust milk me. crates everywhere, but yeah. you just there. But there's little. You'll see them printed on there. Time out there. The property is so and so, and it's illegal to take them and all that. So, well, I know. guess it ain't that illegal. They all over the place now. And really, now, and, and let I me saw tell a cop y'all, doing one. I saw a video with a cop doing it. Oh, no. that's supposed to bring us closer to the police. Look, I look, guess I ain't doing that. I already yeah. fell down a flight of stairs. I know what it's like. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, we don't want nobody to fall off the top of one of them. Now, I, now, if they start upping the pay, like if they say they're gonna pay you like a hundred thousand dollars, I might. No, nah, I'm good. No, nah, I'm gonna get out there and do. I know how. I know how to navigate one of them. Th- I can keep my ballot. But right. other than that, nah, I'm not. Getting I got trouble no skipping over cracks in the concrete on the sidewalk. I don't. I don't. Yeah. <laughs> not Ladies and gentlemen, be safe. Don't get involved with that. We're going to move on to the next subject, which is the show Larry and Muchella been dragging me through the mud to get on. I'm going to do it finally because we, <laughs> we need to grow this audience. And that show is Heels. It stars Stephen Emil. And one of the reasons why I was resistant to watch, I'm not going to lie. He was the guy that played Arrow on the CW Arrow DC show. I I'll like tell you, the this- reason why I wanted to watch is because the other dude is the guy that played on that show Vikings. Yep. Yeah, and he yeah. was also in the Hunger oh, Games. Amazon. I like that dude. And he was in Bad Boys. He was in Bad Boys uh, for Life. Yeah. Now, see, I've I've never paid any attention to that dude. But one thing that did pique my interest is CM Punk supposed to be showing up on this thing, and the huh. ex Pittsburgh Steeler, James Harrison, is in it with his big his big Debo looking ad. But he only I five foot seven. I, I thought he looked familiar, but I couldn't place him. Oh yeah, man. That, Duke is on small too. Yeah, man. And he's oh, only the, the guy with the afro? 
No, the black dude. dude he's the black, 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 dude. black dude with the ball head. Okay. He's play, he's played for Pittsburgh. I'm going to give you guys a little clip of Stephen Emil giving you something behind the scenes just to let you know what this show is all about. And now we will be reviewing this next week, so get yourself ready. <laughs> That's now, crazy they did all that at Tyler Perry's joint. Yo, I yeah, mean, for right? as much, much as we pick on Tyler Perry being a one-trick a one trick pony, he has taken that money and he has done something beautiful because not only are they filming this there, but some of the MCU is being filmed at the Tyler Perry studio. So shouts out to that brother. Nice. But I'm going to come to you first, Mooch, after I give the people a story. Now, Tressa C has always encouraged me to save some of my stories for the book. But it's certain, <laughs> there are certain things that we talk about up here that make me remember my youth. When I first got out of high school, one of the first jobs I did was working at Domino's Pizza with these two older white dudes. And they was in wrestling. Now, when you're, in the, when you're wrestling locally, it ain't a whole lot of crowd. You're wrestling at high schools on the weekend. It might be 15 people that show up. But, hell, you don't care. You love it so much. So these dudes knew that I like wrestling. And they was trying to get me involved because they ain't have no black dudes. And they, fig <laughs> they figured I was a cool black dude. You know, let's get this brother in here. And um, I went to an event with them, and I didn't wrestle. But what they did let me do was be the manager on the mic, talking junk. And if you can <laughs> only imagine what little 19-year-old Lamont was saying to the crowd of 18 <laughs> people in Aiden, North Carolina, <laughs> with these two white dudes who is a tag team, and I'm their manager for a day. And I was talking cash. I, I think I really made the other dudes mad because I was talking <laughs> junk. Oh boy, I was calling them. I was calling them cabbage patch rednecks, and oh lord, boy, it was a mess. But I'm glad Moochie got me to watch this because it made me remember those young I stories. Wanna so see, I want to see what the take that you don't talking all this snack. <laughs> look. Like I said, I was 19. I don't even know if they had tape, but if you were from Aiden, North Carolina, you happen to be watching us and you remember that some 20 some years ago, hit yeah. us in the comment section. But Moochie, take take it away. Tell us why we should watch this and why you've enjoyed it so far. I've always I've been a wrestling fan from when I was a kid. So I I like the behind the scenes thing. And I want to see if some of the stuff takes place, like if they're gonna follow the script of the that Ace wrote, or are they gonna go off script? I mm -hmm. like both of the black guys in it. Um, last night's episode was good. I like the the manager that um Ace brother has. I don't have all the names yet, but by the when we ready to review this, I'm digging and get to my paint book and have everything right next <laughs> <in the chat. laughs> Oh Lord, I, Larry. I'm surprised you said yes to it. I'm happy about that. <laughs> well, let, let, let me just tell you how it's going to go now. Next week, I don't know how y'all can fit in because we we have a huge, we have an expanded audience now, ladies and gentlemen. We have panelists that's willing to sub in so that people can take breaks. Next week, Power, we're going to do Monday. Heels, we're going to do Tuesday. And Wednesday, we're going to review the finale of Godfather of Harlem. So, Larry, talk about this Heels and how you feel about it. Yeah, man, I like this show. It's just a lot of fun. It's, um, I mean, you have all the fun and excitement of of the whole wrestling world, but you also have like the the drama of of like the small town and and family and brothers that are you know that are like the big brother little brother sort of dynamic and trying to get all that going. It's just it's it's a lot of fun. And then, and what's her name? The blonde chick that used to be on that show where she played a a U.S. marshal. I can't remember her name now, but um. I like her too, and uh, you know they have some. They have some new, some new people in there. That Kelly, what's her name? Kelly uh, Berglund. That's the new hot chick on there. Mm -hmm. It's just a lot of fun, and I and I like it because it's not. Um, it's not all focused on like the big, super, you know, glammed out sort of wrestling. It's very much the small town, you know, circuit. It's almost like, it's almost like a. Um, it's almost like a, I don't want to call it a circus, but almost kind of like a circus act in a sense. It's like a, you know, it's like a, a like a, a circus act that comes to town. It's just, it's fun and it's good. It's a, it's like, a, I mean, cause it's so small town. It's like, it's, it's like a white version of Lucha Libre, you yeah. know, except the That's Lucha Libre, exactly dudes are huge. they're big, but some of them are big like that too. But, but you, you know, gotta, like Larry, you got to think what you're seeing is what pretty much every country town 
probably has going on in their high schools on the weekends. Like I said, when I was 19 in Aiden, North Carolina, we had a match. Now, they wanted me to take a bump. A bump is they wanted me to get slammed or something like that. And I was cool with it. I was fine because after I got slammed, I was going to be able to get up and DDT somebody, if you guys remember wrestling terms. <laughs> but it, it didn't go out that way. So all I got to do was be on the mic. And I've always said, because WWE and a lot of wrestling programs have had a hard time with their black superstars because so many of rednecks are fans of the sport that they mm. hardly give a black dude a chance. I've mm. always said, why don't you just embrace the hate? Let these black dudes talk the same type of junk ravishing Rick Rude used to talk to the crowd so that they can hate these black dudes so much that they come to <laughs> see them. That they because that's what I was doing. Hell, right. they couldn't have paid me enough money to be a man. I would have called them rednecks, Trump lovers, um, the <laughs> underbelly of the serpent. You Kansas City cheese steak, oh boy, I will, if you give me a mic in a wrestling ring, they're probably going to have to have me security to leave because I'm, be, I'm going to be a mess on that mic. But oh, man. It, it did remind me of that, so I'm glad y'all got me to watch it because all those, all those memories, it brought me back yeah. to all those memories. And the way that, like Larry said, the way that they did the show in a small town field makes it good. It makes yeah. it intriguing. And you get to see from what I was reading – there's going to be some opioid issues because in wrestling, mm. drugs go on because it's well, wrestling. Needed. Wrestling is scripted, yes, mm. but you got to think of these dudes as stunt dummies in essence. Right? You know, they are taking some real bumps. They are, you know, falling out of the ring. They're hurting their legs. It's some pain involved. They're right. stunt dummies, and when you have that type of thing going on, there's going to definitely be some painkillers, probably some steroids involved. And dudes getting hurt. So, right. stars Sunday night, heels, ladies and gentlemen. Have you have you already caught up on it? Um, to, in bits and pieces. Episodes. It's bits and pieces, but I'm right. gonna watch. I'm gonna watch them in um I back to back. I back gotta be watching and take notes. Well, when you watch it, just the 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 little blonde hot chick that's with uh that's with Ace. She does this move at the end of the last episode on this dude that just gives you a preview. You know, I don't know if what's his name's in here, but it's a little foreshadowing of what we are going to see with her because she is legit. Like they've been pushing her off, like, but you could tell. Yeah, they just know that moment. Ballet. You could even see when 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 Jack looked at her, like, oh snap! I think I think we have something we didn't know we had right here. Yeah, he he was looking at her like, I need to put you in this story somehow. So. All right. Well, ladies and gentlemen, get ready. I will be reviewing it Tuesday. Um, it's, this is, this is going to be a busy weekend. Heels, Power, and Godfather of Harlem. My God. <laughs> wow. Since we still talk, like, before you go to the next subject, mm -hmm. after this, in October, Dark Side of the Ring, the second half of that season comes on. And that's real good. They're gonna show the plane ride from hell. Remember when they had that big plane ride? They were talking about yeah. all the stuff that mm -hmm. happened on there. Right. That that's gonna be good, y'all. There's a lot of great shows getting ready to come on, and when we're done, I'll I'll talk about some of those shows and just kind of get a feel of what you guys are gonna be watching. But now, ladies and gentlemen, I'm gonna take you back in the day. Do y'all remember this particular movie? Hey man, my little sister tell me you can't keep your motherfucking hands to yourself. No man, I'm sorry, I didn't mean it. Nigga, you think my sister a hoe or something? No, you think no. Think she a fucking toy? No, I think she pretty. Oh, man, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> hey, nigga, get off me. Hey, hey, leave him alone. Hey, nigga, what, y'all want some of me? Man, yeah. What? I, I guess so. No man, this is my fight. Okay. What, nigga? Oh. Ooh. Okay. Damn. I sworn I saw the light. A hand reaching out to me from the heavens. My mistake was his fist. I told you to scare him now, Stacy. Stop. Hey, come on, man. Don't stop. Don't you go hurt him. I said stop it, Stacy. Let's go, Elise. Mm. Mm. Are you all right? Yeah, I'm okay. Alexa, let's go! You know, I'm sorry about... 
Mm. Oh, I'm a bad. Oh, oh Lord, now man. your friends come. Ah, oh, man, come <laughs> on, man, man. I thought he was gonna kill you, man. Hell yeah, man. Hey, yo, you gotta hit on Stacy though, baby. Yeah, hey, word. Ain't nobody dude. ever done nobody that. Nobody did that. You the man. Thanks for having my back, yo. Oh, for sure, man. Hey, we always got your back, man. Yeah, man, we got you in this shit. Anyway. We can't have you getting killed your first day in the <laughs> That's now, a classic, y'all. Ladies and gentlemen, that's a classic. That's the wood. And they're getting ready to have this screen played on one hmm. of our major networks. But I just got to say this. That Melinda Williams, man. You want to talk about somebody that loved her back in the day, and then I followed her on Soul Food series that came on. I think it was Showtime or HBO. She was good in that. And every time I see Old Boy, all I can think of is got to get that hate out your heart. That's all I can think of. <laughs> I know. That was looking like Scully oh, back there. <laughs> that's, that's all I can think of, man. But um, yes, ladies and gentlemen. The classic, the wood that we remember from back in the day is coming out. Let me read you the news excerpt. Showtime has given a pilot order to Rick Fumonias and Justin Hillians for the show based on the 1999 coming of age film, The Wood. Omar Epps, Richard T. Jones, and Tay Diggs starred in the film version as the three lifelong friends who reminisce about their lives and loves during the time growing up in the 80s. The story centers on Diggs' character, who gets cold feet the day before the wedding. And there's more. It's a coming of age stage for black dudes. But here's the, here's the part down here, ladies and gentlemen, that gets me. No one knows who's going to be in the cast just yet. And if any of these old stars are going to reprise any of their roles as uncles, fathers, dads, or anything like that. So having hmm. said that, Larry, I give it to you first. How do you feel about a wood TV series? <clears throat> um, it could be good. Here's here's the thing that I here's what I worry about is that you take a classic like this, and it's real easy to mess it up. And mm. there's a lot of people that have very very fond memories and feelings about this. And if you don't do it in entire all of its justice, if you don't do it right in every way, shape, and form, people are gonna dog it. You know. Mm -hmm. And so they just, I, who, I don't know who's making this, but they need to be very, very careful when they do, just to make sure they get it right. Um, let's see here. Rick Fumanya and Justin Hillian. These are the two that they gave the pilots to. I don't know. Yeah, I don't, I don't, know, I don't know them, so. I don't know them either, but um, never heard you, you got to get this right. Muchella, what you think? I feel like this is going to be a good thing. I hope um, it's still going to be based out of California, so we have another... Um, series from that era era i want to know are they going or is it going to be now or are we going to go back in the eight the days when it was actually filmed are we going in that time period they haven't given anything other than that showtime has ordered the pilot so there there's no script there's no casting yet hell the way y'all got me excited call, about to, to me they could call it the wood and and just have the the guys deal with their children offsprings and they all own boys. Okay. So Davian Wallace said, I'm going to I'm going to watch Rick directed movies. So Davian, put a comment on something else that he's done so that we can kind of get a feel for what he's all about. <clears throat> um, you know, I just need to know a little more. Right. Um, they have to know that this is a classic, and they have to know that the eyes of us folks that watched it in 99, 99 is when I graduated high school. They have to know that people in that era, that genre, are are the ones you're catering to now. But I know you want to grab a new audience, but you've got to get the core first to hopefully gravitate to the new audience. So I'm hoping that they're going to do something that can get us intrigued and then maybe grab on to some of that new audience. I don't know how you do that because yeah, they tried that with they tried it with coming to America, and I don't think that that landed well in my opinion. They was you trying know, to do too much with that. That's the same thing I was I was thinking. I was like, you know, and I mean, if they try and do like Muji was was suggesting, maybe like they might go back in time. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure that's going to connect with a with the current audience. And if they don't, if they try and make it a more updated thing where they're dealing with maybe a coming of age with people that are that are younger, you know, maybe in their 20s, you know, late 20s or what whatnot. 
I think you're dealing with a different demographic altogether that that some of the people who are who are, you know, fans of the of the original movie just may not connect with. You know, because this whole new generation is very, very different. I mean, we're all, all the generations are different, but some of them are way more different. And I think the generation now that's out is way more different than our generation because of so many different things like social media and, and you know, just the way that the world sort of works and people interact with each other. I'm, I'm just not sure that if they make an updated version, it's going to resonate with people like us, you know? Okay. So they're saying that the Rick guy, he did dope and brown sugar. Okay, so that's what I'm saying. He might be able to do the time piece. Dope, they was doing stuff from the 80s. They had um people from the 90s. Like, they he, the kids that was in teenagers, they were teenagers from nowadays, but they liked the 90s fashion and the mm -hmm. 90s music, and they was dressed like that. So Johnny Davis coming through with a nice little comment here. He said they should go forward from after the wedding of Tay Dick's character and the other two dudes to see what they are doing now instead of going back. Uh, the, the only problem with that is them dudes is gonna be like, what, 50 years old now? And yeah. you're yeah. not gonna get the younger crowd if you that's, do that. That's, that's why I was saying they gotta do yeah. something with their offsprings and probably have something with their story too. Right, you, you gotta have at least one of them involved. You, you, you don't, what, you don't what channel is gonna do it? Showtime. I mean, it would be funny. It would be kind of cool if they were all if they were all still friends and grown up, and they had kids, and the and the stories still involved them, but focused on the kids. But especially if you have it where instead of having it all three of them as just boys, you have one of them has a daughter that's a part of the crew too, mm -hmm. and then you can have that whole dynamic about how do you deal with having a a girl in the crew, or maybe one of the guys starts to have feelings for the girl and doesn't want to mess up the relationship. I mean, all kinds of stuff can pop off with that that can still make it fun. And then you can still tie in all of our generation by having the old guys in there as their dads. So, and what what the hell is Melinda Williams doing? I ain't seen her on nothing. She ain't doing nothing. I mean, I, she, she can get her know. butt up here. She ain't doing... She still look good. I seen the picture of her the other day. But, but <laughs> acting, she ain't doing nothing. She can get up on this thing. You know, yeah. unless she's producing or maybe she's writing. A lot of these people that get into acting, when you don't see them, they're still behind the scenes. Behind doing the scenes yeah. So I'm picking on her because I'm trying to entice her to get back on the screen <laughs> for my own personal feeling. So yeah. Belinda Williams, if you be, if you ain't busy, get back involved with this thing. <laughs> Post your comments, people. Let, let us know how you feel. You're interested in the Wood TV series. Depend upon how it shape up. I think we might give it a shot. And we it's just need fun. to see where they're going to go with it. We got to see where they're going to go. Yeah. So last thing I got for y'all, then we'll just kind of chop it up on some other shows coming up. Sweet Life Los Angeles. Uh -oh. I got the trailer. Now, Moochella, this is kind of the new generation's version of the wood. I would say this is why I kind of picked this trailer to go behind this. Except for us people our age, we ain't really kind of feeling what they're doing right now, but just take a look and we'll break it down. Everything I say, it just happens. So we're gonna be millionaires. Yes. Hey, hey, hey. Y'all are giving me the vibes that I've been looking for. South Central LA. We breathe top creative superstars. All this designer on my body got me drip. We're looking at black success, really. If I got up on a lean, I'm a sit I run the rest with my queen, I run in the nip. When they go up, they go up. Cause I be getting paid. Mm. Yellow diamonds on me look like lemonade. I love my group of friends. We're all striving to be the best. That really making a name for themselves. Cause I'm balling. I was waking up getting racks in the morning. I was broke now. I'm just deep, bossy. You have to be no more surprises. Oh, oh my God. Oh. Hold on. No, he not. Cause I be getting paid. We about that action. He disrespected you. What are you gonna do about it? I'm never gonna trust him again. If somebody's getting out of line, you'll be put back into line. I'm more successful than you because I work harder than you. Are we even friends? Uh, hey, look, you better go pray on it. You say, yeah. Sometimes burn bridges lead the way. But if I think about you growing up and to see your success, it just makes me feel good. You're the control, mommy. You gotta know what you want. I finally closed on the home. 
You gotta stay on your toes. Thinking about moving out, moving in with Cheryl. She must have put some mojo on you. <laughs> keep on pushing. Yeah. Just turn up. They gonna get any way. You keep getting wild. Everything I say, it just happens. So we're gonna be millionaires. I'm gonna drive a horse. Create a legacy? Yes. We're going up. This is just a taste of what we can achieve. Ready for that next step. Uh -uh. <laughs> hmm. Uh, let me think about this real quick. Um, so back when I was young, I hate to keep going back to my twenties. There was a show called The Hills, and it was based in California. This Baldwin was, Hills. This was, no, not no, not the Baldwin Hills. This was some white people. And oh, yes. You're talking about, yes, the one out by the beach, uh, by yeah. Laguna Hills. Yeah. You, well, first you had the hills, then you had Laguna Beach, the TV mm. show. It reminds me of a black version <clears throat> of those shows. Um, now, I saw that um, Issa Rae is a producer on this thing. And then I saw them say that it's totally unscripted. I can just go ahead and tell y'all right now, that's that's a lie. <laughs> like, like that, that 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 is a lie. Some of this there's stuff, no such thing as unscripted no, there, in, there, in reality TV. No, there is no such thing as completely unscripted in reality TV. Having yeah. said that, I give it to Moochie because I believe on most of these shows, eighty five percent of the audience is women, and the only other fifteen percent of the men that's watching is either gay or it's because they the men that get drugged in by their husband watching. So Moochie, yeah, I give it wife. to you. <laughs> yeah. yeah, or their wife exactly. Take it away, Moochie. I mean, I feel like if it's, it's it seems like it's a positive show. It do. It does. It looks like it, I hope it's not a lot of bad fight in how they show black people. And I I would I'll try one episode and see what it's like. Well, um, it it's already on HBO Max. I don't know if it started yet because I saw the little thing. I don't know if it if it's it out. Is. I tried yeah. to watch an episode. I didn't even get through the first 30 minutes. Uh, I was like, you couldn't yeah. get into it? I couldn't. It was like I was a, I was immediately turned. Don't get me wrong. I, I I love women. I love big asses. I love twerking. I just don't always want to see that. Just like it is, I don't want to see it promoted like this is a thing that we should be celebrating for all of our young women to do. And it's like it starts off with these with these two dudes that, like I think that's like one of the guys and one of the girls are friends, and then they meet up with their partners. They're at the beach, and the two of the girls go go to like this beach twerk class or something it was just the whole thing seemed so set up and fabricated it just was a turnoff like they're saying it's not scripted but it just the whole thing just was it seemed so overproduced and it just wasn't i didn't like it maybe the young kids will like it but it I wasn't think this it, is for I, a younger crowd yeah, yeah. And, I mean, I, and i've and i found that i like reality tv i've i didn't think i would like it early on i used to dog reality tv when i was in grad school and people would talk about it but I started to watch it. One of my one of my friends, one of my from my cohort, she's a she's a VP at um, at Bravo now. She she produces um, the uh, what's that? Uh, med, what is it? Something something for medicine. Um, married to medicine. medicine. Yeah, Mary, she produced she produces married for uh, married to medicine and the Real Housewives of um, of Atonement. Atlanta and some oh. other show too. And I think Shaw's of uh, Shaw's of Sunset. Sunset. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So she's, I mean, she's been into reality TV for a long time. She saw the writing on the wall. That's what she wanted to do. And she's doing it. I've, I've found that I started to like reality TV, but this just something about it didn't seem right. Like it just didn't seem, it, it seemed just too pro. It seemed too, um, it just seemed too produced maybe. I mean, to me, this is no different from um, hit love and hip hop Atlanta. Now they got love and hip hop Miami except for this group of kids don't seem to be as ratchet, if you guys get what I'm saying. They seem to be a little bit less, they seem to be a little more chill than the Love and Hip Hop crew. But having said that, but I thought, I thought, I thought hold, hold on, hold on, I feel Larry. like those people were friends. Larry, hold, hold on, I thought Issa Rae was more mm -hmm. of a, a positive, and I'm not saying that the show is negative because I haven't watched it. But it seems like it's going down that storybook of the housewives, the, the oh, here, no. and all that stuff. And I thought Issa Rae was supposed to be in this elevated, positive sister who wouldn't go down this type of road. 
Yeah, I, I don't, I don't know. I mean, I, I don't know. Mind you, I didn't watch, the, I didn't watch the whole episode because I started watching it and I got turned off and I was like, I'm out. And mm-hmm. so I, I mean, it may, maybe it went into another positive direction. I don't know, but I just wasn't feeling it, so I was, I was just out. But you know, I, I just, I don't know. I mean, I, I just. Some of these shows, I think some of them, especially the reality TV ones, I think they're just, they've become so overproduced. I think back in the day when they first started some of this stuff, when they first started like the, um, like the real world and, and road rules and, and all that stuff they used to do on MTV, it really was. Like I had a buddy of mine whose little brother was a producer for real world and it was all unscripted. They just went in there and filmed them for weeks and weeks and weeks. And then they would give him all the footage and sit him in a, in a, in an editing bay and tell them, look for these storylines. We want to see storylines of someone who's drunk or someone who's gay or someone who's angry or happy. And he would pull out those storylines and that's how they cut this together. Now I feel like that all these shows are, are a little bit different than that. And this and this one seems like they're taking it to the next level. Like they're like it really does seem like there's all these set up scenarios that are happening different situations that are planned out for them to have certain uh you know certain interactions and reactions and i don't know mm-hmm. just it, it wasn't for me maybe 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 i'm just outside their demographic and i realize as i get older that's just gonna happen yeah mooch you gonna give it a try i'm gonna try one episode but i'm really not into like the reality show with the women because they they make the, the ones on bravo make black women look bad they paint us in a bad light it shows a lot of black backbiting and all that I stopped watching Love and Hip Hop a long time ago. Well, Moochie, let me say this because you, you know, you're the queen on this show and the people love you. I get people in your comments talking about Moochella is my heart, Moochella is my queen, Moochella settles you, boy, all this kind of stuff. So let, let's let's just let's just let's just get real about this thing. <laughs> when you watch those shows with those women and they are having surgery to scoop out fat out of their stomach and put it in their butt. And then you got 50 year old women still trying to show their damn bellies, but yet they want to come down on men for sexualizing women. It's just, it just sends mixed messages. Right. You can't be sitting it sends, up here. It sends mixed messages. Exactly. You can't be sitting up here trying to say you positive and all this type of stuff. And you want men and women for that matter to respect you for your intellect when the first thing they see when they see you is half your ass cheeks, half your butt. You you basically just got some some saran wrap around your breast and they see your whole body. How but it's you, not it's not even so much that it's the drama that they cause like. Well, that too. They, they, that they, too. They show classy women in evening gowns fighting. Right. It's just a lot of stuff, and it just doesn't show black grown women in a good light. I well, work with I work with girls twenty years, and we've gone on vacations together. We spend the night at each other's houses. We've um watched each other's kids, and if we did f- fall out, it wasn't like if, if I'm gonna stop speaking to you, I'm gonna stop speaking to you. I it's just like to me, they like the drama. I don't, you know, I don't like all of that. I can't. I don't handle the trail well anyway. So maybe that's probably why I don't like it. Well, let me tell you something. The, the most watched of all the Housewives shows is the real Housewives of Atlanta. Yeah. The, you, you've you mm-hmm. got the rich white women. You've got everything in between watching those women in Atlanta, and they be doing everything Muchella just got finished talking about. Um, but look, look who came through to show some love. Hey, be, sure to, be sure to go Nita subscribe to her channel. Nita the diva done came through to let y'all know she ain't going nowhere. You should be watching her videos. Her link is in the video description. And for you, Nita, you haven't seen this. And I know this one makes y'all very upset when I play it. This is my thank you, Nita, for the $20. What a money reside. What a money reside. What a money reside. What a money reside. Okay, baby, let me tell you something. If a whore ain't paying y'all bills, that's the last thing y'all should be worried about. Oh and she's got a, she just did the own um, candy man review y'all y'all need to check it out yes she did the candy man review to let y'all know whether or not it's worth watching um and you know she hit me with some some dimes in the facebook messenger today got me interested i might have to take a look 
Um, <laughs> b- before we get out of here, I just want to remind you guys of some other shows that are coming out. Black Mafia Family, September the 24th. Mm. But we already know about that. That one's on Stars or on uh It's on Stars. Stars. On Stars, yes. gotcha. A show no, that Star. is so good that is in the vein of Damages and Your Honor is a show on Amazon Prime starring Billy Bob Thornton called, um, damn, what is it? Goliath, ladies and gentlemen. Well, oh, yeah, 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 I've seen that. That show goes so hard. And yeah. each season, he's taking on some major conglomerate, whether it be the State Department, whether it be Big Pharma, someone that is so powerful, other legal firms are unwilling to combat these people. And he yeah. takes them on. They almost kill the dude. They threaten his daughter. They kidnap his daughter, all this stuff. But to this point, he's won every case. And they do it in great dramatic fashion. That's coming back on September the 24th. And I'm reviewing that whether the panel want to do it or not. I'll just do that <laughs> shit by myself. Because that show is good. Um, it's one of those ones that you shouldn't miss out on. If you like The Good Wife, if you like the good fight, the transition from the good wife to um, the good fight, you'll definitely love Billy Bob Thornton and Goliath. Now, I've never really been a big Billy Bob Thornton fan, but I like him in this role. I like the backup characters in the role. It is a great show. You guys get on Amazon Prime and give it a try. And neither the diva. We did talk about Spider-Man yesterday. <laughs> the tra- We talked about it. But you know what? I'm going to quit doing Marvel trailer reviews. You know why? Cause don't nobody watch it. Don't, I, don't nobody... I, I watched it. Oh, I was you, here. Yeah, you <laughs> watched you were it. There, right. <laughs> but that, that I get better. I a get lot of be- people like Miss K who who just aren't into Marvel like that. They watch. They show up maybe for some of the big things that appeal to them directly, but they're just not into the to the Marvel thing. Yeah. Now, like I was, I was going to say before Larry got in there, but he hit it on the head. When I do the movie review, I get better views than the trailer review. Um, Mm -hmm. my channel is not per se SEO for geekdom, which definitely is near and dear to my heart. But each and every time I do one of those videos, I'm always beginning to feel like I'm wasting time. So I might just wind up eliminating the Marvel trailers, even though I love doing that stuff. I just, I mean, I love doing it. It's just not worth the time anymore. So I'll just be doing probably the movie reviews, the TV shows, and we'll just keep it at that point. Um, have, have any of you watched um, uh, that new show called Reservation Dogs? Nope. No, I just saw the trailer of it. I thought it was funny, though. <laughs> yeah, I was looking at that. I, I saw the trailer before it came out, and I was like, I think I want to watch that and check it out. There's, I want to see that one. And um, and I don't know if any of you watch Archer, but Archer's coming back out. The uh, cartoon? I think it actually airs today. The cartoon? Yeah. Okay, no, I haven't watched that. Mm-mm. Archer is probably one of the funniest shows. If you haven't seen it, it is one of the funniest shows out there. It is absolutely oh, yeah. hilarious. She, she started watching tonight. She's watching Thor. She was watching Thor. She called me. It's only enjoy <laughs> rewind that. Enjoy it. Enjoy it. Enjoy it. Enjoy it. And if you need someone to help break it down, you got access to Muchella. You got access to me. Everybody, we'll break this stuff down. Mind you, I am the nerd, though, of this whole panel. <laughs> I am the Marvel nerd. I'm the DC nerd. I can break stuff down on a different level, but my audience don't seem to like it yet. I'm going to get you one day. Stories and everything. Mm-hmm. Have, you, um, have any of you watched Ted Lasso? No, but Your Honor's getting ready to come back on. They renewed it for a oh, second. I, I heard they renewed that. But if you have not watched Ted Lazo, it's on Apple TV Plus. That is one of the best shows of all time. It is absolutely a fantastic show. It is way better than I ever thought it would be just seeing the previews. It is wonderful. And I'm gonna put out a video because they it just they, they just started a new program today. I don't know how many of you out there have T-Mobile, but if you have a T-Mobile, if you have T-Mobile service, you can actually get a year of Apple TV Plus service for free. You don't have to do anything except go sign up for it, and that's mm-hmm. it. And then uh, after your year, they'll charge you whatever the, the going rate is unless you cancel it. So I'm going to make that video tonight before I go to bed and uh, put that out. So, But it's on the, it's on the Apple TV Plus service, and, uh, it, it's, and that's the, the, on that same service is another show that Lamont has mentioned a few times called C, C. Oh. with uh, Jason Momoa. Oh. It's on that yep. service. 
But guess yeah. what? Season two of that is getting ready to come out next month. And it's yeah. going to be Jason Momoa <laughs> versus his brother, who is going to be played by Dave Bautista. Oh, Kato, <laughs> be more careful. I can't wait. That show is good, though. Honestly, it's good. It, it serves the correct role for Jason Momoa because I'm never, ever going to be able to get him play Drago on Game of Thrones out of my mind. And so he's tight-casted, but he's done a good job on this show. And Dave Bautista has shown that he has a, he has some range a little bit. He's got yeah. a little bit of range. And to see him versus... Is that because of Army of the Dead? Well, not just Army of the Dead. He's done a little bit of comedy, and it was kind of funny. Okay, on Stoop. Stoop he's up. done the MCU. Mm -hmm. um, and then he did do Army of the Dead, where he showed some range. So he's been in a lot of this stuff, and... Um, he did that I just other one with the little, it. where he where it was like an apocalypse where he had that little girl and was trying to get her to safety. It was um I can't remember the name of that show. That wasn't the Army of the Dead. No, I'm gonna have Say to look it, it up now. Huh? What was the name of the What was the show? I can't remember the name. I'm gonna have to look him up now. I'm gonna look up his IMDb right quick. It's called C. Gina. Yeah, but C C is the one with Jason Momoa. And Dave Batista is going to be his brother, and they're going to get and, into a fight. And when does that come on? Um, that is next week. Next All week. right, I got to go back and watch certain episodes because I was watching it, mm -hmm. but I was still. I think that when that, when I started watching that, we were doing Snowfall, and I had stopped watching that to go back and watch Snowfall because we was getting ready to review that. Can y'all please help my sister Muchella make more videos because? She's got every ability a YouTuber needs. People love her. She's ingratiating like an aunt or a big sister. And people love the way she talks. I, I, I did do a video. I'm, I'm going to put it up after. I just finished. I'm doing the last part. I'm going to put it up tonight. Oh. It's the breakdown of Godfather Harlem season finale, y'all. Here's um, another one. Nita, Nita, see, when I come to, when I come to D.C., too, when I come to yeah, D.C., I'm, I'm stopping the Nita house first. The Witcher is really good. And um, it comes on Netflix. It stars your boy that plays Superman. And I hated him as Superman. Well, I ain't going to say I hated him. I ain't care for his Superman. I like him better in this than I did in, as Superman. Absolutely. 100%. Yeah. He is okay, great so let's, as Witcher. Let's try, to re, let's try to watch a whole season of this and, and get, a, get like a panel and we, we talk about it after the show. We I might like have to do Witcher's that. One of those shows that that would really. I think serve I, I would well. like to do something like that. The Witcher, yeah, I think, is said good. I'm playing. Oh, I'll be <laughs> scared, y'all. <laughs> I think the Witcher would do well week to week because right, there's a lot of stuff in there to understand. That's it's like you have to pay attention to that show, and I think being able to discuss it probably would help because a lot of times people see things you don't see. And see, and and that's what worries me with, um, not everybody that follows my channel, but some. They don't want to have to watch something on TV and then have to go look on the internet for an explainer. They would rather watch it and then come hear us talk junk about it than to explain it. Now, what I'm real good at doing is finding Easter eggs in TV shows, especially like comic-y type TV shows. And that's what The Witcher is. It's based on a book. And it's, it, it puts comedy, you... Speaking of comedy, you know our fellow person Jay Moore is on the show too. Yeah, man, I got to see. Yeah. I got to see some of that when I met him up in Chicago, man. Yeah. Dude, dude, funny, man. He, he yeah. did a good job too. He did a great job. Yeah. And Jay, Jay Moore, Jay Moore will be back with us on Monday, um, and it was a good time. But ladies and gentlemen, that's gonna do it for us, man. We're out of here till Friday. Special oh, that guest show was called the Bushwick, by the way. My bad. Bushwick, Bushwick, yeah. Bushwick. Okay, cool deal. We'll have a special guest on with us on Friday. That's when we do Friday with friends. We'll yeah. preview Power. We'll preview Godfather of Harlem. Don't forget to like the video, comment, subscribe. Keep pushing Moochie because she's y'all getting her that fire lit underneath them hind parts. So she I dropped did, the movie. I did some videos on Animal Kingdom. Nobody's watching it, but that's a good show. If I'm gonna have to watch your breakdown. I watch season, that show. If you have Amazon Prime, it's on that. Mm -hmm. And I think it's on Apple TV too. I'm not right. sure, but if you don't have that, you can get the TNT app and watch it on that. Exactly. Yeah. You can watch all seasons. You can catch right. up. She got it. So, ladies and gentlemen, to that next Sex Is Hell video, which will be Friday at 9 p.m. We'll see you. Now, later. <laughs>
Moochie done got herself an outro too.